In this video, I'm going to share with you my proven eight step system to craft your vision and then an action plan to make it happen. Step one is you want to get clear on your values. Your values serve as a filter as to what you're going to say yes to in life and those things that you're going to say no to. And if you're not clear on your values, you risk going and doing a bunch of things that are not aligned with ultimately what brings you happiness, joy, and the things that just get you fired up in life. When you're clear on your values, you're going to find that you're able to stay motivated because you're working on things that you genuinely love and you're able to avoid burnout because you're just working on stuff that you enjoy doing and avoiding things that feel soul sucking. Now here are my values as an example. Number one is energy. I only allow good people around me with high energy. And my goal is to surround myself with people with opportunities that bring me joy, bring me life and make me feel good. If things aren't aligned with, you know, my head, my heart, my soul, they don't feel aligned with me. I just say no. Second value of mine is play. I'm always prioritizing adventure. I enjoy traveling around, building internet companies, exploring different cultures, meeting new people, and mixing both pleasure with business. If I find myself sometimes working on something that I don't enjoy, I'll either say no to it, or I'll ask myself, what would this task look like if it were fun? My third value is fun. I wanna do things that are enjoyable, that are memorable. Every three weeks, I go and take a trip, generally to a national park or some sort of eco retreat, just to go and get outside, get into nature. My belief is that nature is the ultimate mentor, and so, so the more I can just go and enjoy myself out there, disconnect, put away my phone and just experience life, the more I feel like I'm connected to myself and the more joy I'm experiencing in my life. My fourth value is excellence. You know, my belief is that you need to be too good to ignore. Oftentimes people are maybe not experienced the growth they want in life or the results they look for. And I think the best person to look at is yourself in the mirror. You gotta look at the content you're putting out there, the audience you're growing, the business you're building, the product you're building, the people you're serving, your customer experience. Is it too good to ignore? I believe that as CEOs and as founders, you need to be a yardstick for quality. When I'm building a business, I always wanna double down on a state of excellence, right? Setting that bar of quality that I need to be a role model of to my team um, and hiring people around me that are aligned with that bar. You know, these values, serve as a great metric for the people you're gonna bring on board and surround yourself with in your company. And if they're not aligned with your values, then pass. My fifth value is creativity. Creativity to me means exploring new things, pushing the boundaries of what's possible, thinking of new and original ways to present information, content, your product, and making things that are generally memorable and bring a level of delight to the end customer. The sixth and arguably the most important value of mine is community. You know, I think as humans, we have this deep sense uh, and a need for belonging. And without that, we perish. And so for me, I like to surround myself with a great community. I invest in my community, not only on my team, but on, you know, in my own life and the communities I exist in, helping build communities around the businesses that I'm building. So community over everything. Part two is to get clear on your niche. So your niche is really made up of like three parts when I think about my personal kind of niche. One part is your vision. The second part is your mission. And the three is that core niche that you exist in. Oftentimes you wanna go and perform this vision exercise for both your business and your personal life. When you're thinking of your vision, you wanna think big. You know, shoot for the moon, at least you'll land amongst the stars. Have that big vision that sets your soul on fire. I know my vision is to help 100 million founders accomplish their dreams through proven systems. It's audacious, it's big, and it fires me up and gets me out of bed every morning. And so what is your vision? The next thing you wanna do is get clear on your mission in life. This is the big impact that you wanna make on the world. My mission in life is to really serve founders better than anyone else in the world and help them accomplish their dreams through the proven systems I've developed in Founder OS. Now, the next thing is then your niche. What is the thing that you wanna be known for? Now, I'd recommend having a business niche and then your own personal niche. So as an example, my niche for Herb is cannabis marketing as a service. We help cannabis brands with SEO, email, and programmatic through our community of 14 million people. On the Founder OS side, the niche is founder operating systems, helping founders with proven systems to grow their audience, brand, and community. On the personal side, I've crafted this niche, which I call soulful entrepreneurship. You know, I believe that entrepreneurship is the ultimate meditation, that the more we kind of become still inside and develop ourselves as humans, the better that we're gonna do in our business. And that if we ignore our inner world and we don't see entrepreneurship as this meditation that it is, oftentimes our external world crumbles. And so I think it's important to get in touch with your inner world and to nurture it, to develop it, to help find calmness, stillness, peace in your life. And you'll find that oftentimes your business evolves in a beautiful way. The next step is finding your proven marketing system. You wanna figure out your target market, your uniqueness, your proven process, and your guarantee. You know, when you're building your own personal brand, 
Who are you looking to attract? When we're putting content out there, it's really increasing our service area for luck, community and connections. And we wanna make sure we're being a magnet for the right kind of people. So the more clear you are on the exact target market, the more you're gonna be able to hone in on them with surgeon-like precision and attract them to your product, to your service, and to your community. So my target market is elite founders that are looking to dominate their niche. I'm looking for founders that are really hungry, they're eager to go and learn, and they have an inner burning desire to make a massive dent in the world. My uniques are that I have built-in distribution day one, an audience of over a million people around my personal brand, and I have proven systems to help founders with audience, brand, and community growth. Now, my proven process for going in and accomplishing my vision really comes down to the audience I'm building and my proven audience growth systems. And so I have a newsletter that's growing at over 10,000 subs a month. I have my YouTube, Twitter at 200K, LinkedIn at 230K, Instagram at 330K, and all these platforms combined are growing at around 60,000 people a month. And that's only growing. The key thing here is that that audience that I'm growing online serves as this massive bucket of people that are not only listening to the message I'm putting out there, but spreading it with their friends. Now my guarantee, which I almost have as a mantra, is be too good to ignore. With everything I'm doing, whether it's this video here, whether it's crafting my vision, whether it's a sales call I'm on, or a different email newsletter that I'm writing. My goal is to go and set a bar of quality that I look at the best founders out there in my spaces, or I look at competitors, and my goal is always to be 10X better than that. Now, hey, do I always hit that? I don't know, probably not. But the goal is something that it's aspirational, it fires me up, and this kind of mantra, be too good to ignore, is something that I try to live day in, day out. All right, part four here is we wanna set our 10-year goals. We wanna have a big, hairy, audacious goal for our life. I think you should do this from both your personal vision and also for your business vision. You wanna vividly imagine what your life is gonna look like in 10 years. So for me, I wanna have an estate with tons of land in Mexico, Japan, and in Colombia. I wanna have retreat centers for founders all over the world so that founders, when they're looking to just reconnect with themselves, maybe connect with another founder, they could go to a retreat center in Hawaii, in Colombia, in Japan. I'm looking to build a community of 100 million elite founders around the world that are going and using the proven systems from Founder OS to accomplish their goals. I'm looking to have three kids, a lot of abundance, a private jet, a massive estate, and basically just be able to live the life I want with the money freedom, time freedom to do anything I wanna do. Step five is to get clear on your three-year goals. So now you know your 10-year goals, you wanna reverse engineer that to what you need to accomplish in the next three years to make that happen. So for me, it's to have an estate in Hawaii, one in Mexico and one in Colombia, so I can travel around the world and have these home bases and as well as retreat centers for founders so they can go reconnect to be able to accomplish their dreams. I'm looking to have the top entrepreneur YouTube channel, the top entrepreneur newsletter, a wife, kids, epic road trips every two weeks, have access to a private jet whenever I need it, and be able to constantly be surrounded by amazing nature, live close to a national park, and just be able to live the life of my dream. Now, step six then is getting clear on your one-year plan. So now you know your 10-year, your three-year, so what do you need to accomplish in the next one year to make your vision happen? Now, step seven then is getting clear on your 90-day plan. So every single quarter, I'm getting clear on what are my goals for the 90 days of that quarter. And so your 90 day goals ladder up to your one year, three year and 10 year vision. And again, we're just reverse engineering what success is gonna look like. Now, step eight is to think about opportunities across people, product and process. For people, it may be people that you need to go hire, people that you need to onboard or more systems that you need to make so that these people can easily go and understand their objectives, their key results and what success looks like in their role. For your product, you wanna be thinking about the things that you can do to make your product better. Is it a better onboarding experience? Things you can do to increase the retention and just anything you can do along the customer journey to make your product more sticky. Lastly, you wanna think about your processes and systems. Like James Clear says, we don't rise the level of our goals, we fall the level of our systems. So the stronger our systems, the stronger our business. For me, I'm focused on constantly updating my Notion company wiki. I'm focused on constantly developing systems across marketing, sales, strategy, content, audience growth so that I can continually be scaling my newsletter, scaling my YouTube, widening the net of people coming into my funnel, funneling people from my rented audience, my owned audience, to my monetized audience, and continuing to serve founders better than anyone else in the world. Now, at this point in the video, you may be wondering how to grow a massive audience so you can accomplish your 10-year vision. So go check out this video, which is how to grow an audience if you have zero followers.